Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be looking at determining the level of unsaturation of fatty acids. This is essentially just a stoichiometry calculation, but I thought I'd take you through a couple of examples in case something like this turns up in the exam. This is one way in which we can determine the number of double bonds that are in an unknown unsaturated compound. So the way we do this is from what we refer to as the iodine number. This essentially works on the fact that unsaturated fatty acids can undergo addition reactions because of the C double bond C. Okay, we know that this alkene functional group can undergo addition reactions with halogens, and we use that in order to be able to work out the number of double bonds that were present. Iodine will react via the addition reaction, and the iodine number is a measure of the degree of saturation in fats, i.e. if we know how much iodine has reacted with the fatty acid, we can work out how many double bonds are present. The iodine number specifically is defined as the number of grams of iodine which reacts with 100 grams of fat and oil. So if a question is asking about the iodine number, it is referring to this. Questions of this sort can also just be done not referring to the iodine number, but expecting you to work out the mole ratios of iodine or bromine or even hydrogen. The, the idea though is the same, that for every one C double bond C, we will use one mole of the iodine or the thing that is attaching across the double bond. What we do need to know is a known amount of the fat being reacted with a known amount of iodine. The excess iodine is then titrated against sodium thiosulfate and the amount of iodine reacted with the fat is determined. Sometimes in questions, if they're making it easier, they will give you the amount of iodine that is reacted. Sometimes they might provide this in a volumetric analysis situation. So if we look at different oils, soybean oil, olive oil, bacon fat, beef fat, we can see that the iodine number here is higher in the soybean oil, which makes sense. It's a plant oil, so we know it's more likely to be unsaturated. Whereas something like beef fat and bacon fat, these are both animal products. These are fats, so they're more likely to be saturated. Whereas we have polyunsaturated, okay, polyunsaturated oils. Remembering that plant materials are more likely to give us un unsaturated fats, hence why they're liquids at room temperatures, because of the presence of those double bonds. So an unsaturated carbon-carbon double bond will undergo addition reaction with a halogen, as we see here. So if we have something like the fatty acid linoleic acid, it has two double bonds. So we could write the equation that linoleic acid would react with two equivalents of I2 giving us the disubstituted iodine at each double bond. So we would end up with four iodine atoms attached to our molecule. This is a really handy reaction because not only can we determine this through the mass of iodine and work out the mass of the number of double bonds, but iodine is highly colored. It's yellow brown when it's I2. Okay, and it loses that color as bromine does when it reacts across the double bond. So we can follow this with processes such as UV spec and things like that to watch the decrease in concentration of the I2 color as the reaction progresses. The higher the level of unsaturation, the greater the I2 is required. So if it had five double bonds, we would expect five equivalents of iodine to react. So the calculations that we're looking at doing is the iodine number is a percentage of the mass of the iodine reacted by the mass of the lipid reacted. Okay, so the iodine number specifically, remember this is per 100 grams of lipid, okay, is the mass of iodine divided by the mass of the lipid, which should always be 100 multiplied by 100. So if we look at this calculation here, we have 18.5 grams of lipid reacts completely with 11.5 grams of iodine. We're asked to calculate the iodine number of the lipid. Now, because of the ratio, we're just going to substitute into this one here. So we can say our iodine number 
is equal to the mass of the iodine reacted, 11.5 grams completely reacted, divided by 18.5 grams of the lipid, multiplied by over 100 over 1 to convert it into a percentage. We plug those values into our calculator. Divided by 18.5, and we are going to get 62.16. Okay, so we're going to get 62.16%. Okay, and in this case, we've got three sig figs, so it's going to be 62.2%, or the ID number of 62.2. Okay, because 62.2 grams of iodine would react with 100 grams of the lipid. As I said, you can also do this using mole ratios. So you work out the ratio of iodine that reacted to the ratio of the fat. So the number of carbon-carbon double bonds can be calculated using the iodine number and the relative formula mass of the lipid. Essentially what we want to do is work out the mole of iodine that reacted with them versus the mole of fatty acid. So how many mole of iodine reacted with each mole of fatty acid? Because the number of mole of iodine is going to equal the number of double bonds in the hydrocarbon tail. Okay, as long as we work out N of iodine per mole of fatty acid. Okay. So let's look at an example here. We have a long chain carboxylic acid molecule, has a molar mass of 302.45 grams per mole. Okay, so the fatty acid molar mass is this, and an iodine number of 420. Remembering that this is the mass of iodine per 100 grams of fat. We've been asked to calculate the number of carbon-carbon double bonds in a molecule of the acid, so one molecule. So we want a one-to-one one mole ratio. Okay, so if what I'm looking for is the mole ratio of I2 to my fat, first thing that I'm going to do is work out the number of mole of I2 that I have from this iodine number. Remembering that this is a mass of iodine per 100 grams of fat, I'm going to take 420 as my mass of I2 and divide by the molar mass of iodine, which is 253.8, which is going to give me 420 divided by 6. This is the number that's in my calculator, mole. Now I want to work out the number of mole of the fatty acid, which is, I'm going to assume 100 grams because my iodine is per 100 grams of fat. So 100 grams of fat divided by the molar mass that I was provided. So 100 divided by 302.45 is 0.33 mole. So now what I want to do is the ratio of iodine to fatty acids. So that means I want iodine 1.654846 divided by the number of mole of fatty acid. So going to take those numbers from my calculator, divide by 0.33 and what I get is 5. 0.014. So I'm going to round this down. So this means I have 5I2 for every fatty acid, which means I must have five double bonds in my molecule because what I have is five equivalents of iodine. So I have five carbon double bonded carbon per fatty acid. So this is a polyunsaturated fat with five double bonds per molecule. What I'm doing is calculating the number of mole of iodine in terms of the number of mole of fatty acid and getting the ratio of the two. So don't freak out if you see an iodine number calculation. What you need to do is have a way to find out the mass of iodine and the mass of the fatty acid.
which means if they give you an iodine number, just remember that definition, that it is the grams of iodine per 100 grams of fat, or look for those values in the question, okay? Remembering that you they should give you the mass of each and the molar mass. Well, you can get the molar mass of I2 by looking up the periodic table. They'll have to tell you the molar mass of the fatty acid or you have those fatty acids listed in your data booklet. So if it says linoleic acid, look up linoleic acid in the data booklet and go from there. Not likely to because that already shows you the number of double bonds. Or they might ask you to work out the mass of iodine that would react knowing that you already know the number of double bonds present in those molecules. Okay, that's it from me and I'll see you in class.